Go ahead. Coach, just in terms of, you know, both teams want to play fast and teams start with basketball, how do you find the, the gap to take advantage within that, in that pace game? Both teams, meaning us in Memphis? Yes. Well, I think the whole league tries to do that at the start of the season, and um, some of it dissipates as it goes, and others can maintain that. But um, for us, I'm not really thinking about Memphis. They, they don't do what they do. Um, we just really have to be efficient with our biggest thing is spacing. And secondary break, we have our initial, which some guys do better than others as far as pushing the pace. but. What are we doing next when that's stopped and we don't have an immediate uh, scoring opportunity? What are we getting into next? And that's where we can get stagnant for a little bit of time. And so we have our secondary options out of that. And we just got to be a little more crisp and intentional in what we're trying to get done there. Have you decided if Tari would play tomorrow or is it just kind of going to be how he comes out today? Yeah, it'll be game by game. The way that you staggered Jalen, where it's like five on, a couple off, <coughs> finish the, the first quarter, start the second, I believe you kind of like the number. Or sit to start the second. Jalen? Yeah. Well, last game we went, got him out early, brought him back to finish, and um, he actually stayed a little, little bit longer than planned in the first quarter. So we liked him to finish quarters more so and get about an eight, nine minute run in the first quarter. But we've um, kind of went through different looks through preseason. Um, and it's a game by game thing with him and Fred and kind of matchups. But I think both of them are comfortable running a longer stretch, eight or nine, and the other six or so and then coming back to finish the quarter. We like to have one of those two guys on the court at most times. And so um, kind of figuring out which, which one works best as far as that. And I think they're both comfortable doing it, but it's more so he's playing with the second unit at that time. So he's, he's good either way. I like his scoring ability when Reed and, and I'm in and some of those guys come in and you know, obviously goes through it with the flow of the game, how it's going. What would you like to see from that second unit tonight that maybe you didn't see against the Hornets? Uh, I wouldn't say anything specific that they didn't do that um, the starters did do. You know, uh, we obviously had a good first half and a bad second half, and that was both units. And so, um, you know, like I said, the opening night jitters for a guy like Reed, you know, you saw those, I think, but even some of the guys who've been around it felt like we were rushed early before we finally settled in. Um, and that's Tari coming back, and, you know, some guys being out there as well. So, you know, what they did in the preseason really well was uh, defend at a high level. They, that unit, you have Tari, I'm in, and some of those guys, Steven, when he played, he was out there. So we liked what we saw there. Um, obviously, no Steven in the lineup, but really guys settling in and um, you know, doing what we did well in the first half. And that was a team wide thing more so than the second unit. Jalen took 15 threes last game. Is he at the point of his career where you kind of just trust that he's going to uh, find the best shot depending on what he sees on the court? Or do you, would you like to see him go into the basket more, you know, maybe draw more fouls? Uh, both. I do I do trust him with his recognition of the shots now. I think uh, Memphis, or, I'm sorry, uh, last game, Charlotte, they really protected the paint with their big back and went under a lot. And so he takes the shots into there. And, um, you know, him going 5 for 15 and missing – you know, wide open looks. You know, it's been on hot streaks before where you knock those down. That's a different story. Fred as well. And so uh, Memphis is very similar with how they guard tonight. So those looks might be there, but it's a, it's a balance. And that's on us to call plays, uh, myself to call the plays that get them downhill, get them different looks. And obviously, we, you bring the big up, you know the shots you're going to get with those guys big back in the drop. But, um, you know, we like him attacking smalls as well. So there's plenty of things we can do to get him downhill. But in the flow of the game, make or miss when I don't really want to call it a bunch of plays. You know, dead ball, free throws, timeouts, all, all drops that I like. We do like him taking the shots that were there, and I think he took all extremely good ones. And so, you know, look at it and look at the numbers. and. It was more so, uh, I would say, our defensive, and we got out rebounded 33 to 12 in the second half. So it flipped as far as that, more so than the open shots that were missed. Because we trust those will go in. Is there a minutes target that you have for a man off the bench, or is it just game by game, whatever makes the most sense? As many as possible, honestly. So it's not a target, but we yeah. love them on the floor, um, and it's a tough thing when you're playing 10. Uh, you know, some minutes get shaved off him, uh, as opposed to if you play nine and you could give him those eight extra minutes. But mm -hmm. um, he's most more often than not going to be the first guy off the bench, and for whoever, whether we decide to go one, two, three, four, he can go in for any position. <coughs> and you want to get him as much as possible, honestly, and the things he does and uh, the way he affects winning. No target minutes. It's just we don't want to obviously be too low. You want to get him all the opportunity you can. Yeah, but that's the trade-off of when you have a ten-man rotation, basically. Yeah, and that's why it's tough. You saw that in the preseason, but 
Um, you know, a lot of times that tenth man may get ten minutes, you know, or eight minutes to two shorter stints, and obviously without those, you can add them to whoever targeting them in, read or whatever the case may be. But um, right now, that's what we're gonna go with. We got depth, and we obviously want guys to stay engaged and take advantage of the opportunity. So figure out as far as that, and try to get the other guys minutes, and wherever that comes from, I'm in shaving a few from Jalen or, or or Fred or whoever. Um, that's a welcome thing for us. If this wasn't part of a back-to-back, would Steven have had a chance to go tonight? And is there a chance for tomorrow night for him? He's uh, definitely a game-by-game, game and um, I don't think it has anything to do with the back-to-back. If he felt good tonight, he would have played. Um, and we would have thought about tomorrow, tomorrow, but we're not saving him for San Antonio to not play tonight. You know, um, It's really just a game-by-game, game game, practice-by-practice, and the way he feels when he's ready, he'll go. And we're not you know, trying to skip a game and we'll take care of the game in front of us first and then if you can go from there, we'll play them. What, what are some of the notable differences in preparing for Memphis, you know, when John Moran is playing as opposed to, you know, last year when he wasn't available? Right, yeah, the whole team changes with him back in the lineup. Um, you know, I think some other guys benefited from his absence at times. Bain looks like a much more complete scorer now because of the kind of green light he had last year. So that only makes him tougher. But um, yeah, he's so dynamic that you have to have scheme and game plan specifically for him when he's in as opposed to when he's out. He's a very unique player. So it goes without saying it's a much different game. The pace is increased, obviously, and then in attack mode all night, you have to be ready for that. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.